For one, from two, I was a huge Young Money fan. Okay. So oh. there was Weezy, there was Beezy, <laughs> like, that was the it. Young Money, you need to be now on your trace. That was me. Like, <laughs> you wouldn't tell me nothing about Lil Wayne. So then Beezy comes, huh? And then in Form 4, I changed schools. Yeah. And there, some girls couldn't really pronounce it for some reason. Uh-huh. And then some would say Beezy, some would say Beezy <laughs> but, but Beezy sounded nicer, so I was like, okay. Change my name to the Zay. It does sound like, oh, now I, I get the whole hand B thing. It's because it's a B. Okay, definitely, oh, nice. definitely. Great. So, rhyme is your thing then, I think, because now it's rhyming. Tell us more about B Zay. Uh, where, she come, where does she come from? When did you start uh, discovering, you know, poet uh, as a craft? How did you fall in love? Because you're also a vocal. I think it was, it's still the same angle, man, when you talk about arts, singing and mu- music and, 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 and poem, you know, poem. Just tell us more about your practice. Um, well, I've always loved music. Mm-hmm. I always imagined myself as a Sierra, Rihanna, yeah. that was it. Yeah. But then I got into university uh, at Guadalupe mm-hmm. campus, mm-hmm. and then the poets there kind of recruited me in a sense. Mm-hmm. They told me to just come through mm-hmm. and have a good time, so I did. I had a good time. After a few sessions, they were tired of me sitting there. They forced me to write. Yeah. I wrote something, I presented it to the crew. Mm-hmm. They said, okay, good, um, we're so having a show on this day. They saw the potential through. in you. They did, because I was always critiquing their pieces. Oh. <laughs> so okay. someone would share, and then I'd be there, like, critiquing and stuff. They're like, okay, every day you've got something to say, you better write. So what did they have? Was it a talent show over at Vasti? No, they, have, they were having an event. Oh, so okay. they were just kind of recruiting new people. Mm-hmm. So they called the first years to just yeah. come through and watch the recitals and yeah. rehearsals and everything. Some came and then they left, and mm-hmm. then others, like me, decided to stick around. Okay, okay. So when the first um, event they had was there that year, I was actually doing vocals for one of the jets there. Okay. Did vocals, and the second one, I've been reciting poetry ever since. Nice. Very nice. So, uh, you writing your own stuff. Definitely. You started there, you've got to say. I started writing, yeah. I actually fell in love with even spoken word there because mm-hmm. I didn't really like poetry mm-hmm. because of the high school influence of literature. It, I <laughs> hated that thing. Really? It was 
was so boring. <laughs> <laughs> the English was too much. It was. I, I, I'll blame it on the teacher, maybe I'll blame it on the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, wow, I'm just, I'm just shocked because then you fall, you fall in love actually with spoken word uh, uh, now, later on, uh, tertiary. So then, ha, what really drew you in? So this is something, this is something that, that is good. What did really just like say, no, 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 man, spoken word is, is it. It was hearing how they were able to make it deep and mm. funny and conversational at the same time yeah. i could easily connect it wasn't like they were saying thou art beautiful <laughs> or anything like that but oh. exactly and it was people like proton people like um uh the conductor and they are the way that they recite is is just unique mm. so i was like okay this is interesting maybe i could do this and i could i turned out to actually be good mm. and music paused because of it wow it paused for a long time you know i like the fact that you mentioned that story because every time you meant you mentioned poem or a poet people think no man it's for snobs Ish. There's, so much, there's so much misconception surrounding you know poetry as, as a whole uh, and I like the fact that you mentioned that story because you know when you're not into something when you've never been introduced into it it's easier to just like you know shut sh- shut it out or criticize it until you actually educate yourself and you learn it that actually that spoken word is not just you know without art That's that, that is so mind. true <laughs> you can you know you, you can recite it in your own mother tongue you can do the neck as well, and it's more meaningful. Now, somebody who's listening, uh, just break down poetry according to your understanding of the spoken word now, according to what you, you have, because now you're you, you a <laughs> your poet. Uh, what? You are. <laughs> <laughs> we invited you because you recite. And yeah, we'll get to the music stuff, but I just wanted you to address that. What have you learned? What do you understand about it, you know, about, about, about poetry as a well? whole? Um, Poetry really gets you through life. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I've noticed. It's not just you speaking about a tree or something. You can speak about a tree, Mm -hmm. but the way that you craft your words Mm -hmm. makes it um, sort of encode a deeper message. Mm -hmm. And I love that about poetry. Spoken word allows you to engage even physically with your body. You perform. So you perform when people can even envision whatever it is that you're saying Mm. and that is amazing for me when it comes to poetry you are able to sort of create in your own mind Mm. an image of what the poet is saying and whatever that is in your mind you are right you have the creative rights you are actually right so poetry ministers hey in in I can definitely say that, especially mm-hmm. if you are doing some spiritual crafts. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one. I, I cannot explain how many times I have been on a uh, church platform. Yeah. And because of the way I present my poetry, I'm very calm. Mm-hmm. I thought people would just listen and clap and go. And it usually turns out to be a lot more than I anticipated. True. And True. Poetry ministers in a way that sometimes music doesn't yeah i still can't explain it because it it surprises me every time so definitely poetry ministers and poetry sticks with you yeah even after the poet is gone Mm -hmm. there's always some words that you carry throughout your whole life the power of words definitely we are talking to the amazing bj uh we talk all things poetry this is brim fm on the creative space man we should yeah until we leave i would want so. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about nothing uh we're talking poetry. we're gonna come back i want to hear uh just now you know she said it's, yeah, it's, it's actually an important fact that you know poetry goes deeper than music sometimes mm. because it, it ministers in a way that music cannot touch in an area that it does not reach that is uh, the, the art of poetry, the words. Uh, power. <laughs> I'm, I'm a poet. I love poetry. You know, I, I love it so much because I, I didn't grow up in it. It was also just like, ah, maybe, because I was into music as well. But then as I grew up and my sister's into poet, but, you know, so she started introducing me to, 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 to your Jeanette, uh, to, to, to your Jack Hill Perry. So I'm like, what? Wow. So, yeah. 
we're going to take this song and we're going to come back uh, and talk about the people that inspires you in the crowd. You understand? The work that, that is shaped busy uh, into what she is now and what she will be uh, because she's still very young. <laughs> it's amazing for myself. We are talking all things poetry. You can send your text. It's a cumulative and busy. Inequality. So, Bizze, are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> Our old people is here already. <laughs> Our producers and camera people, everybody. All right, then right now, uh, let's just be brief. She's coming. Uh, when, when, we, when, we get, when we get back right now, we're just going to be. She's going to be reciting Bizze. The music now, and we are all is Raising the flag. There is something similar in the way whites treated blacks in apartheid and the way heterosexuals treat everyone else today. One, the use of biblical references to secure privilege and maintain dominance. Two, extensive support from governments in ensuring these minority groups have their rights stepped on. Three, the small portion of amazing people who are allies and ashamed because they treat everyone the same. This is not a poem to raise awareness, but to raise the flag. Not the national flag, the international gay pride flag. To support the bravery of lovers. It's not easy, so we'll support the courage of fighters. It's not easy to wake up each day and spread a kind of love that is hated. It's not easy to Embrace who you are in a world that wants to explain why you aren't. Aren't attracted to who they thought you'd be attracted to. Why you aren't content with the body biology gave you, yet you are a different person inside. Why you aren't projecting the masculinity or femininity they assumed on your behalf. You are the warriors. When you hold hands, you fight. When you love out loud, you fight. When you exist in spaces that try to exclude you, you fight. And those rendezvous you have with the people keep saying who you are is wrong, you fight. And I hope one day you don't have to come out, because they don't. One day you don't have to explain yourself, because they don't. One day you don't have to do anything to prove you deserve everything they do. You are not a point that you must prove and someone must agree with. You are not excluded from knowing God, although sometimes the church does. You are loved, so raise the flag with you.